With the desert stretching behind me, I dismounted my camel and felt the god smiling upon me. Spelunky. It was October 27th, 2015, when Ronald, a young man who liked to wear a warm hipster animal hat, ventured out, ventured out into a hot, dry desert and beneath a legendary mine. He had heard that here, there were many riches to be found, many dangers to be avoided. Ronald had many misperceptions, misperceptions mostly of his own invincibility. He was not a, he was not a particularly physically fit man, although he did play on an Ultimate Frisbee League. He was capable, but far from a world-class athlete. And a world-class athlete is who you might expect to have the sheer gumption and strength to make it through such a terrible dangerous place. Snakes around every corner. Spitting snakes. Snakes spitting venom from their mouths that kill men at the very touch. Lethal spiders jumping. Leaping to attack all intruders. Arrow traps. From old statue heads. Damsel dogs in distress. And skeletons. The walking dead. Rising from the ground to kill our hero. He feared none of it. Perhaps bravely, but more likely foolishly. He moved a hundred meters down into the depths of the earth and casually grabbed diamonds on his way. Pre-cut, polished diamonds. He had never, he had heard that there was wealth in this place, but never had he dreamed of grabbing $19,000 worth of precious rocks in less than a couple of minutes. Our hero is somewhat surprised to see a shopkeeper. Selling wares that might be useful on such a journey. It's suggested that perhaps there are other travelers in this place. He meant to drop a single bomb, but instead dropped two. Beyond that rock was a dog that needed rescuing, and a key almost the size of him. He knew of a certain treasure chest, locked treasure chest, and wondered if it might be the perfect fit.
You return to the shopkeep to buy some bombs. But Zounds. An evil spirit approached. He deftly avoided the spirit and continued on his journey. He grabbed a valuable statue, but it was a trap, unleashing a large bear, a large boulder. He was wise to such traps, though, and had a rope ready to jump quickly out of its way. I've rescued enough Dan I've rescued enough dogs. Ronald said. And instead of rescuing this one, he sacrificed it on an altar to an eight limbed goddess. Its blood soaked to the altar, and he took the springed boots that sat magically in the dog's place. Ronald eagerly picked up a jar of glue. Thinking surely he could find a use for such a versatile item. He whipped bats out of the air, crushed spiders beneath his feet, continued on his way. Continued to take fistfuls of precious rocks with him. Oh, shoot. He dropped towards the ground near an exit, but dropped too far. He was knocked momentarily unconscious. And at that time, a bat nibbled on his neck, draining him of his lifeblood. Fortunately, he had enough life in him to journey another 100 meters down to the depths of the earth to find an underground rainforest. He fell again, clumsily.
What was this? The artifact you picked up earlier. It was making a sound. Moving in his pocket. He found it was detecting a secret exit. A secret passage somewhere further into the depths of the cave. With only the luxury of a single health, he journeyed into it, wondering what he might find on the other side. He found a black market, full of shopkeepers, seemingly identical to the ones he saw before. Rather than making some honest trades, he decided to rob them all. But his attempt at robbery was foolish. With little strength left, he pitched a bomb and soon found bullets riddling around through his frail body. Ronald was young, he was foolish. He lasted only a little more than ten minutes on his journey. But it wasn't bat, or mouse, or spider, or walking dead. It was none of these supernatural dangers. It was man. that led him to his end.